I hate bullies. And my heart broke when my 13-year-old son Caleb came to me and told me he was being bullied at school. We decided to do something crazy to fix the problem. And today, Caleb's going to tell you that story. The fish birds are around, they're chasing the same bait ball. Yeah. Oh my... Oh. Look at you! Oh, oh my Look at you! <laughs> Of course, obviously, where did the story start with Caleb? Obviously, as you can tell, he's not 13 now. No. He's now 19. This happened in 2017. But where the story started was actually in a doctor's surgery because Caleb actually had some issues with his knees where they weren't repairing themselves and his, his meniscus was uh, making him um, have excruciating pain in his knees, so therefore he couldn't play sport. He had an operation and we had to go to the doctor's surgery to see how it went to see if he could take up sport again. And the thing is, is when we sat in that doctor's surgery, and he told me that he was being bullying. The first time I'd heard of it was in that doctor's surgery. We decided to come up with a crazy plan. And there was a picture on the side of the wall. Do you remember what that picture was? It was a lady going up Everest. It you was... got it. The youngest ever Australian to climb Mount Everest. And Caleb said to me that he'd like to do something crazy. And he asked me, can we go to Everest? And of course, obviously, I said to him, look, We've never trekked before. We've never climbed before. I didn't even technically know where Everest was. And the thing is, is that I said we couldn't climb Everest, but maybe we could go to base camp. Eight weeks later, we were getting on the plane yes. to fly. What was the town called we flew into? Lakla. Lakla. That's it? Lakla was where we first started off, first day, flew in, on the literal world's shortest runway. No one of a lie, it's a cliff base. It's not like an open area going in. It's a cliff base, and you literally... Bounce, bounce, go. Yep. And hit the ground, well. stop, because if you don't stop, you hit the mountain. We um, landed in Lakla, did the flight, terrifying, good fun though. Uh, met everybody there. Yep. But the rest of the first day was down, and this is where we were taught our first thing, which is going down is way more painful than going up. The only problem about going down is the more you go down, you know, the more you gotta go back up. Huh? Oh, this is uneven. Yep. There's Yakpo, and I just stepped in it. And you experienced your first um, uh, bridge as well on the way down there. In the bridges. It was, and I thought that was, I thought that personally, um, like, it was, was high. It was high. <laughs> it was, was nothing compared so to what we had. So wrong. Yep. Our uh, first hotel, mm -hmm. well, hotel in. It in, was the like Yak and Yeti. Yep. That's where we stayed the night, woke up the next day, and found out we had an acclimatization day on day two. Yep. Uh, that broke me. Six hours of walking straight up. Yeah, I, I broke. You're about halfway. How's it been? <laughs> What's that? We've got about how much left in front of us? But that hole is a Mount Everest. 50 minutes left and it's straight up, isn't it? And to be clear what he was climbing, he was climbing stairs that were half his height. So it wasn't stairs, it was more little mountains for six hours. Altitude sickness finally started kicking in. You feel nauseous, your head hurts, you feel exhausted. But I remember the conversation I had with you on the side of the mountain where we had our stop after three hours. And you had three well, hours had left we and you the... were broken. Yeah. And I said to you, look, Caleb, I know it's hard, but I will not leave you behind. The thing is, is that we are going to do this together, even if I have to carry you part of the way. Yeah, but if I stopped, I wasn't getting back up. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure it was you, me, and not the guy, but it was the other, one of the other yes. like, assistant guides. Yeah. And we just kept going. Um, and to his credit, he did keep going. Didn't stop, he finished the first six hours. Went to sleep. Best sleep I think I had. <laughs> uh, Passed out, might be the better way of putting it. From there, we kind of had a little incident on the next day. Started walking up a cliff, I think it was to the Everest Hotel, I think yes, it was on the third day. We were walking up a hill. Um, there, was a, there was an American, American bloke. He uh, had his headphones on, if a yak is coming at you, and these things aren't like little little cows or calves, these things are big furry beasts. Huge horns. No, like huge. Could skew you. Yeah. And so the thing is, is the horns were actually, when their head was down, the horns were facing forward, not turned in, literally facing forward. This bloke was looking at the ground, headphones on, just walking, had no clue what was going on, but I'd seen that a yak was coming at him, and he was literally centimetres from getting skewered. We were told that if they get in the way, just to put your hand out with your poles and they'll move. So we literally pushed him away and the, the American bloke didn't even know. 
until afterwards we tapped on the shoulder and he finally seen what ha uh, seen what's happened. Yes, uh, I was a bit more forceful than Caleb where I told him, take your headphones off, mate. You were that close to being skewered, as in dead skewered. So yeah. he saved someone's life, just to be clear what happened. I didn't expect that. We saved someone's life. By the way, that was on day four. Yes. Um, day four was good. We got a hot chocolate, Everest Hotel. It's awesome. Um, hot chocolate. I can tell you, I'd be freezing up here if I didn't have it. This is actually the highest hotel. I think it is the highest hotel anywhere. Mm. Um, and it was, it was one of the best steak sandwiches I had. Oh. But then it led into day five. And that's the day that I, I physically, I was, I was fine, I was walking, but I did start to notice that Dad was having a bit of trouble. It was the day I broke. It was the last K and I rushed too fast. I wanted that day over. It was a seven and a half hour trek, this one. And I was broken and I thought, if I get this day finished quickly, I'll be able to then sit down and get over it. And I pushed too hard. We got there, had food, went to bed. And from that, that's kind of when I noticed the extent of it. It took me 45 minutes to actually get the Panadol out of the container to take them. And I had such a bad migraine and I was so disorientated. I didn't want to tell my son I was struggling because I didn't want to have him think that he may not be able to get there. But he said something to me. Do you remember what you said? I'm not going to be making it there without your son. Like it was. Um... Yes. You echoed back exactly what I said to you. Oh yeah, I did it remember? with sarcasm and yes. not straight at you what I said. You, you echoed back. He literally <laughs> echoed back the words to me. He says, Dad, remember, we will make this together. Even and even if I have to carry you. you. <laughs> Which obviously a 13 year old was not going to be carrying me whatsoever. I'll get a yak and I'll just drag you along with it. Yeah. But the thing is, is after that day and slowing down, we then were able to then focus on the final couple of days, which led us to base camp. On our sixth day, we got to base camp. It was like, it was a narrow trail. It was literally just rocks. Down. So it's like a valley you have to walk into. You have yeah. to walk up, along and into it. So we got there and from there we kind of took photos, did our videos. Hey guys. It's Caleb. I finally made it. We've actually made it to, well, base camp. The best part, in my opinion, was definitely the chocolate bars that we brought. Yep. Which I forgot, I forgot about the entire trek until <laughs> I noticed, day. until I reminded you after you'd filmed yourself. Because yeah, yeah. what we did was we decided to give ourselves a little bit of a, um, a, a reward for making base camp. We said, we are going to take our best chocolate bar. I had a Mars bar, you had a... Crunchy. Crunchy. And we carried them in our bags the whole way so we could eat them on base camp. Now, to be clear, with altitude sickness, as well as everything else up there, I don't think I could taste it anyway. No, I think <laughs> I only felt the crunch and it was sticking to my teeth. <laughs> Correct. The proudest moment I had was the, f the look on your face when you were leaving base camp, because you have to walk back down, just so you know. I tell you, we're not staying up here long because it's quite cold. But I can tell you, I'm not looking forward to what we have to go back up. We have to go all the way back up that. Um, and you walk back down knowing that you'd achieved something. The next day, we found out the helicopter was going to be delayed because of weather. And we were told that unfortunately you're going to have to stay another night near base camp because the helicopter has to come the next day to take us down the mountain. And that's when we stayed in the... the we slept with the yaks in a tent. We decided we had to sleep outdoors next to base camp in a tent next to yaks because some people didn't want to share a room in the hotel that was there. I won't mention who they are, but I'm not surprised. And we were sleeping in the tent. And the thing is, is even though Caleb now had to face another day of trekking down south that he didn't anticipate, he'd given everything to the first day. Yes, he broke at the beginning, but then he changed and he went, well, this is what we have to do. So no, we're going to do it. Going. And you could have yeah. folded. You could have gone. You could have lost your sh You could have gone, eh, I can't make it anymore. But no, you just went, okay, that's what we have to do to do what we need to do. So we're going to do it. And you were it, 13. Yeah. Looking back, just so you know, mate, you were 13. <laughs> <laughs> I have a look at photos now. And I don't know how my lovely wife allowed us to go, to be brutally honest. Um, but, he was one of the yeah. youngest kids to walk to base camp that year. If I really want to ask me how... It changed me. It personally made me think that if you think you can do something, you don't think you can, but you can. Obviously, yeah. you got that. You got that extra push. But now I'm looking around where we are now. Yeah. And we would not be on this boat seeing bottlenose dolphins if we had not sat in that room and True. said, "Let's go." 
True. And then we wouldn't have done a Cape to Cape mountain biking race. True. We, we did our very first mountain biking race. We'd never mountain biked in a race before, and we got prepared in 12 weeks and went down and did it. It was over 60 kilometres over five days, and he made that as well. And, of course, so did I, but we'd never raced before. We decided to do it. But, yeah. And that leads me to the main point, which is why we're sitting on Boston now. Oh, no. Is we are... Uh, doing things together because we found that when we do things that scare us together we have a better chance of doing it father and son we get to make some memories and we get to do things that we may not do necessarily like lock each other out of our comfort zone yes i am just so you know this is, a bad idea. This is actually a crawl <laughs> you gotta crawl through this is a horrible uh, plan. hang on <laughs> Correct. Like, I wouldn't go to Everest by myself. I wouldn't have done a mountain biking race by myself. But when I did it with my son, we pushed each other. And we're now sitting on Boston. So how about before we get into our next plans, because we do have some plans and some goals we want to launch with you. Hopefully, you're going to be interested in over the next 18 months. But we're, we're actually sitting on Boston, our very first boat, a Boston Whaler 255. We are learning as we go. We've got a lot of mates who are helping us out, and we have never backed it out and parked it by ourselves. We've never Te launched this thing by ourselves. No, to technically be I've never driven it yet. Of Caleb has, but we're going to be backing it out and oh, trying don't to tell park me. it. I'm teaching you how to drive no, this. No. Okay, I'm about to say that's your first so mistake. <laughs> I think we need to park this boat for the first time, hopefully, and get through it. Then we'll tell you what our plans are. All set? Click. And oh, then. the engine the we don't have the battery on that. Gotcha. <laughs> Second engine. System alarm again. Well, that's how the cookie crumbles. <laughs> it is what it is. Sitting on a broken boat. As we're just joking, funny enough, sitting on a broken boat is better than not sitting on a boat because we saw dolphins today. Exactly. Yeah. Of course, obviously, we are, have a lot to learn on the boats and obviously we need to get her fixed. But of course, we wanted to let you know about the, uh, I suppose, the adventures we're going to be taking together over the next probably 18 months because I turned 50 in November of this year. It's currently, what is it, June of yeah. uh, 2022. And I have 50 adventures that we want to do together, just like Everest, just like Cape to Cape, just like like buying a boat, something which I suppose I wouldn't do alone, or Kayla wouldn't do alone, no. and have some fun. For example, you ever got any? There's one that I want to do, yeah. person, which is go in bioluminescent waves. That sounds pretty awesome. You showed me a video and I thought it was Photoshop, but it's not. I've got a couple. I want to walk up um, a Bluff Knoll, which is just down south um, here in WA. I want to walk across the Sydney Harbour Bridge, you know, across the top of it that I've never done before. Um, I want to go to Lapland. I want to go um, scuba diving in the Maldives. We've snorkeled, but we have to get our scuba diving license. I want to take my old man paint bowling. Oh, yes. We've also got a fitness week. Uh, we've actually got in August, we're going ah. across to the Gold Coast. We've got a fitness week with um, an ex-AFL player, which is a football player here in Australia. We've never done one of those. And once again, we're doing that together. And we have a whole load of others. Some of them we're going to be doing together. Some we're going to be doing with the family. But all of them are going to be making a step outside our comfort zone. Like trying to back back a boat with a broken engine that we've never done before. <laughs> like that. Uh, Shane, our repairer, actually told us something to try it with the batteries to make, double check it's not the batteries. And if it is, of course, obviously we can then get someone out to look at the starter motor. We're on the way back. Give try it a look. look. Yeah. See if we can find Bobby again. <laughs> Correct. After reconnecting the batteries, we found out that battery number uh, two, which of course is our starboard battery, has got a green light, it looks like, but it's not working properly. And I don't know whether that's a battery or something else, but when we turn them onto one, we were able to start the second engine. At least we worked out that there's a battery problem. So there's actually a marine shop just around the corner here, so I'm hoping we can get back there, replace the battery. I have a high feeling they won't have it on site. Oh, I hope so. Isn't it a good son, carrying the battery? Just so I know, I'm carrying everything else. I'm not just walking here with nothing, but he's, yeah, definitely, sure, sure. he's definitely got the, the heavier one of the two. Anyway, first time for him to change a battery too, funny enough. I'm sweating. Fingers crossed. We've been here for half a day. <laughs> Please work. <laughs> Please it. All the way down. Beautiful, just wait 30 seconds. Just click and let go. Oh, well, you fixed it. Hey, Dad. We fixed it, boy. Give me five. That's another thing we fixed. We decided to take the boat out. First time. Okay, Kurt. If you want to maybe take off the bow ropes, go. Yep. It's pretty tight. Oh, I'm crusty. Sweaty palms. Are we off? Two seconds. Okay, we're unroped. Suspend this side, I've got us coming out, it's okay. 
I'm coming around. Perfect. Are you using one engine or two? I got it, so I got, I got one engine, mate. I'm All just right. learning how far I have to turn it, buddy. Oh, no, fair. You just getting a feel of it? You got it. No, I bet. Remember, eight knots. Yep. So. I'm just going to come through here, go down the opposite side. Make sure that as you're going in, you turn the engine completely off, not not to neutral, off. Off, okay, but when we're in there. Okay. So as soon as you know that we're going in, and yep. you know we've got that speed that we're going in at, not yep. too quick, yep. you're gonna turn them off, just so it doesn't, if we go too far, okay. it doesn't drop the thing. Is that it there? Okay. Okay. There's one with the grass right there. All right, so I'm gonna slow us down. Okay, that's full lock. Yeah, I'm cool. lowering back on the power. All right, I'm straightening us up. That is very, yeah. Now, I think I might need to go backwards, buddy. Try overshoot it a bit, so you yep. drift in. And come on, Coming off the power. Yep. Hard locking. All right, there we go. Yep, perfect. All right. Start going forward a bit. And then forward. I'm easing us in, mate. Yeah, you're doing well. You're dead on strap. Okay, I am, aren't using any power. A little bit further in and engines are off. Successfully, took me two tries, but not too bad for my first drive of the boat. Nah, good. And thank God for my first mate over here. <laughs> Successfully parked. Dad's first time. And by the, the way, boat. and not fixed sure the battery. We know it's Siri. We don't understand either. Uh, but we fixed the battery, got the stuff, got them stuff started, and we parked two times, and learned something today. So, mate, you know our our morning adventure. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> you said it would be an hour adventure. It was go down. Yeah. Chuck, chuck the keys in the ignition. Yep. Put her down. Yep. Do, do a quick shoot. Yep. And we're done. So, what? just so everyone knows, we've now been here for six and a half hours. But I have been. flies here. But I've enjoyed every minute. Likewise. Right? Even I have, when something goes wrong, it like goes right. Correct. And the thing is, we learned something today. That was harder than I thought it was going to be and easier in other parts. I like your point about using the two engines, like the. The, yeah, the spin we'll, we'll on the try stop. that next time because I only tried that once and it worked, but I think that was sheer luck because it was also still, like yeah. the water was still when we were on the JB. But today, this morning and this afternoon has been a great afternoon. Thank you, Matt. That's exactly what I needed. And do you know the only thing I'm not looking forward to? Carrying the dead battery back to the car. I, I carried it here. <laughs>